so that's so official. Okay, you guys, I am gonna um, introduce you to Debbie Moore because um, Debbie, many of the people on the screen, I mean, I don't know how many, at least 50% have been in Mary Kay totally in a virtual world. Mm. So there's many people on the screen that have never been to a live Mary Kay event. Um, they have like, some of them have never met their directors, they are national, et cetera, in person. Um, so I want you to know who Debbie Moore was um, professionally in her life, but then um, you're gonna get to know her um, hopefully a lot better in our coffee chat. So um, Inner Circle, Senior National Sales Director Debbie Moore started her Mary Kay business in April of 1977. Um, she, when she joined Mary Kay. Before that, she was teaching school. Six months after starting her Mary Kay business, um, while working Mary Kay part-time, she had already earned what her salary was for a year of work and teaching. By May of 1978, she debuted as a director and left her teaching job. Every year, she had a new um, unit club from 300,000, 400,000, 550, 650, 750, 850,000 million dollars twice, um, which my unit was part of her unit, her first million dollar year. Um, for reaching the million dollar circle of excellence, Debbie received a $5,000 bonus the first year. And maybe she'll tell us a little bit about that. It was a shopping spree at Neiman Marcus. And from what I remember, I think they flew her and Kathy to the top of Neiman Marcus and they got to shop before the whole store was open and spend their $5,000, however they wanted to. So she might tell us a little bit more about that fun treat. Her second year, she took um, her family on a Christmas ski vacation to Vail, Colorado. Debbie debuted as a national sales director May of 94. The national area celebrated 25 years with her highest commission check in one month of $51,000. She has a first line offspring national elite executive emeritus, Kathy Hallou, and soon to be inner circle national sales director, Donna and Sweeney. Um, over 9 million in career earnings, 13 years as elite inner circle national, number three area in Sapphire division and number seven national area in the US. Debbie has won Cinderella gifts such as three mink coats, one fox coat, seven four carat diamond rings, 20 pink Cadillacs. She's currently driving the Sharp XLR convertible. She um, personally lives in Charlotte with her husband, Bill. Um, of It says four years, but I think maybe it's 40 years. <laughs> Wait, how long, <laughs> how long we've been together? Four, it's four years. 45. Uh, 45 years. So I knew it was more than four. <laughs> we won't tell Bill that typo. She's a mother of two, Nana to six grandchildren. Taylor, their daughter, um, is a graduate of NC State, a senior director with Mary Kay. She's married to Keith Fearing, who's an orthopedic surgeon. They have three children, um, Davis, Andrew, Grant, Andrew, and Ella Rose. They reside in Charlotte. Colby, their son's a graduate of Yale. Um, he played golf there. Um, he works at Barron's Financial. He's married to Laura. They're parents of three sons, Hudson Clark, Coleman, Matthew, and William Blaine Reed, and they also reside in Charlotte. Through Mary Kay, um, Debbie has received all expense paid first class trips for her husband too. St. Thomas, Puerto Rico, a cruise to Bermuda twice, Germany, Ireland, Switzerland twice, Australia, New Zealand, Paris, London three times, Rome, Russia, cruise to Tahiti, Monte Carlo, Greek Isle cruise, Venice, Costa del Sol, Spain, Prague, Austria, Milan, cruise from Greece to Istanbul, Shanghai, Beijing, Dubai, cruise to Spain to Barcelona and ending in the Isle of Mallorca, um, Argentina, Chile, Lake Como, Italy, Monte Carlo, and the Mediterranean cruise ending in Barcelona. January 2020, Debbie officially was retired and looks forward to spending time with her grandchildren and is thankful for her 15 years of retirement income of over 3.5 million. So when you're talking to women who want job security, alcohol, tobacco, cosmetics, those industries, um, you talk about the national sales director position, 15 years paid from a debt-free family-owned company, 
in one of those three industries, she will receive over 3.5 million, bringing her total earnings from her $100 starter kit to 12.5 million. And so I just did a little math. So 3.5 million, I took 15 years, timed it by 12 months, divided that into 3.5 million. So Debbie's averaging about $23,333 a month for Mary Kay in retirement income for impacting women's lives through this product and opportunity. Gotta love it. <laughs> and don't you love when people say, do you have a real job or are you still doing Mary Kay? For $23,333. You guys, those are really, that those things pale in comparison to the impact that, um, well, maybe not for her, for me, they pale in comparison for the impact that she's had on my life, in my family's life. I mean, literally, I met her when I was 23 years old. And because Debbie made Nancy Murata talk to me in a mall so that Nancy Murata could get her perfect start done. Don't ever underestimate the power of a finish line in reaching a goal in Mary Kay because lives are always attached to it. And you never know, it could be someone's eternity that's attached to it as mine was. I mean, I still remember Debbie Moore has changed Alden's diaper. She has been in my home. She was at helping me set up for Alden's um, wedding shower. Um, this family, the more family, God knew that my family needed the more family in our life for what they've modeled in marriage and raising children, um, raising a grandchildren um, and mixing it all together. I mean, God, family, career, they, they really, they're a gritty, graceful family, all in one beautiful package. And I am grateful on May 19th, every year in tears, usually we're on some wonderful location on an NSD trip. But mm -hmm. I thank Debbie. I thank her for recruiting me and not letting me walk out of that guest event to think about it. Mm -hmm. I thank her. So Debbie, um, we hear from in the beginning, you were a teacher. Mm -hmm. um, what held you back? So thinking back to that point in time, um, you know, you and Bill were newly married. Um, you're a new teacher. What could have held you back from saying yes to Mary Kay? And then will you share with us why now, from the perspective that you have, are you glad, most glad that you didn't let that hold you back? Great. Hi, everybody. Congratulations for being here. Yahoo! Boy, when I heard those qualifications, you go girls. That is awesome. I'm so proud of you. And I'm, I am going to answer her question, but I am going to say to you also, never miss a contest that she offers up never miss a contest that Mary Kay offers because that is your railroad track to the top, honestly. When my director threw out things, I was on it because I knew that if I did those things, that was getting me one step further to um, what I wanted out of this business. So dialing back all oh, those years ago, she's testing my memory, but I, I can answer that question. Um, what almost held me back? Well, quite honestly, I wore very little in the cosmetic line. And so for me to be selling cosmetics, that was pretty, um, that was a crazy thought to be honest. But you know what? I loved the product when I had that first facial, but I'll tell you what I loved more because in my story, I had a facial and then went to my very first Mary Kay meeting. And I believe that I, that same day, that same afternoon, that same evening. So I believe that I signed up to become a consultant because I loved the atmosphere. I loved the people that I, were, uh, that I met at that meeting. It wasn't necessarily the product, even though the product was phenomenal, but I wanted to be a part of it. When I walked in, it was a little crazy, but by the time it was over, I had such a great feeling in my heart about the people. And you know, it's funny before you all popped on and before we started, we were talking to Brenda and she was sharing just how thankful she is for the people in Mary Kay as she's navigating through this situation in her family. And it, you know, it made me think back to when I signed my agreement, it was the people, it was the feeling, it was the love, it was the family. I felt that the first night, which is really crazy when you think about it. Um, but I wanted to be a part of it. I didn't know what I was being a part of. I, I really, like I said, I wore very little, I, I think I wore mascara and a lip gloss. I, I mean, I didn't even use skincare, you guys. My mom was never a real big cosmetic user, so I didn't grow up. And I was very athletic growing up, so 
I, I wasn't a girly girl. And so the industry in and of itself to me right now is the biggest mind shift. Like, wow, how did that even happen? But the people and the culture and the feeling that I know you all know, whether you're brand new or you're very seasoned in the business, you know that's why people love Mary Kay, why people come into Mary Kay and why people stay in Mary Kay. And so never forget that when you're talking to people, um, never forget to tell them after they've tried our product or while they're trying their product, that this is so much more than a company that sells cosmetics, that it's a family. And we talked about that with Brenda. It really is a family. And it doesn't matter, I, you know, when I came into Mary Kay, there were 32,000 people in the company. Give wow. that a thought. 32,000. What do we have today? I don't even know, bazillion millions, right? Like gazillion. And it did have a small family feel, even at 32,000. There was only one seminar. We all went to the same seminar. But even with the growth that we've experienced, we, we've never lost that. We've never lost that family feel, which is remarkable when you think about it. Because when a company grows as large as we have grown and as quickly, quite honestly, as we grew, often things get kind of left beside, get left behind or sidetracked. And Mary Kay, when she was alive, was very clear that while she was here, that that would not happen. And when she passed the torch on to the nationals and the directors, that was the mission statement is to keep that intact, keep the integrity, the culture, the things that we love about Mary Kay intact. And so I wanna tell you how important that is for you to do that right now, moving forward. What's the second part of that question? I forgot the second part of the question. That's okay. What, why are you glad now that you didn't you know, allow you not being a cosmetic girl or the industry not being something that you were familiar with? Mm -hmm. Well, obviously you might say, well, that introduction was probably what I'm most glad about, but, um, and that's true. And I had, you know, my career was not this. I had kind of this. And I know that many of you are dealing with that as well. And so I'm thank I, I look back and I'm thankful for that because it made me stronger and better. And it also taught me that I, well, I just never gave any thought to giving up. I never thought this isn't for me, I'm giving up. I didn't like when I was down there. I didn't like when I came off a phenomenal year and had a lower year, maybe the next year, but I knew that it was possible to do it again. And then I looked around and saw people that were doing amazing things. That's what you always want to grab a hold of when you get a little discouraged is look around and see what other people are doing. And don't be jealous. Be excited to know that if it's happening for them, it can happen for you too. So I'm really thankful that A, I, I signed up that night and B, I stuck to it. Now, of course, for the retirement that Bill and I are so enjoying and the time I get. I mean, I wake up in the morning and think, gosh, what should I do today? You know, and after 40 some years of knowing exactly because the night before it was all scheduled out of what I was going to do the next day, it's, it's a whole nother level of a different kind of freedom. Now, do I still set goals? Do I still have my six most important things? Do I still have a to do list? Absolutely. Those things will never leave you. Thank the Lord. And that's what I then can now pass on to my grandchildren. I just had this conversation with Davis the other day, who's the eldest. He's eight about how important it is to set goals. And he said, Nana, let me show you my goals. And he showed me a little sheet of his cute little goals. And, you know, his goal was to get a first place in the swim meet the next night. And he ended up getting a first place. And I said, when he got out of the water, I said, so do you think that goal was the reason you did it? And he said, well, yeah, but I really swam fast, Nana. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, those are the things that Maybe you aren't experiencing right now, but I guarantee you will because the ripple effect is alive and well in Mary Kay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I still remember when I, and you guys have heard me taught, um, teach on so much of what I still um, base my business on. I looked at new consultant orientation at Debbie Moore's house. And I went to her house. I was the only consultant. I don't know if there were other new consultants or not, but it was me and her. And mm -hmm. Taylor Moore was three years old, probably the age of her little girl now, who mm -hmm. looks like she spit her out of her mouth. 
you know, that I learned down south. She looks exactly like Taylor did. And um, I remember Debbie saying, the only way you can fail is to quit. And in your first year, you can't even consider quitting because you don't even know what you're quitting. But after that, the only way you can fail is to quit. And those are, um, gosh, that that's something to hang on to. And I'm glad that you brought up about like when you were discouraged or frustrated, because I think a lot of people believe that when they hear your accolades and they see your gorgeous home and, and that's not a backdrop, you guys, that's her gorgeous home um, and life that it was just always easy. Everyone mm -hmm. said, yes, no one bailed out on you. You know, right now your June goals were done. You were just sitting up by the pool, sipping a, you know, lemonade and, you know, everything worked out how you wanted it to always. And, you know, do you have any other words on that? Like what, um, how did you re-encourage yourself? How did you get yourself, you know, back up? What, what did that look like mm -hmm. to you? Great question. And specifically right now, directors and consultants, as we have, whatever, what is it? Seven more days left in June. I wrote it down. I can't even find it now. Mm -hmm. I think anyway. I think the thing that really um, spurred me on when maybe I wanted to sit down was, I always ask myself this question, how will I feel when it's over if I didn't give it my best? And you know, I can live with myself if I gave running through the finish line with my tongue hanging out, if I gave it my best, but I know that I would beat myself up for months if I had just let it go and said, oh, well, it's not gonna happen. We don't have enough time left. I'll get it going next year, yada, yada, yada. So I wanna leave that with you. I want you to ask yourself, if I don't give these last seven days my 1 million percent, how am I gonna feel July 1st? And if you come out reaching that goal, you celebrate like nobody's business. And if you missed it, you celebrate like nobody's business because you gave it your best. And that's all you can ever ask for yourself from yourself is giving it your best. But let me tell you, seven days, so much can happen. The last seven days of my very first million dollar year did not look pretty. And in the last two days, miracles unfolded because we consistently worked and went from, you know, just, 30 or 40,000 wholesale to 93,000 because we had momentum, we were excited mm -hmm. and it was a team. So if you don't quite have that team yet, you're it girls, you are the team. <laughs> so you give it your best. And if you all do have a team, you rally them and say, you guys, we're gonna give these last seven days our best because it not only, I talked a minute ago about the ripple effect, it's not only gonna affect your personal goal and your unit, but it's gonna, it's gonna have great impact on your national area. And I, I know you've already, uh, you're looking at your best year ever, but in seven days, it can be a super best day ever or best year ever, really. I mean, it's great right now, but think what could happen in seven days. I mean, whew, amazing things can happen. So that's what I always ask myself. How am I gonna feel when the finish line has been crossed if I didn't give it my best shot? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, okay. So when you started, the company was a lot smaller and um, you got to see Mary Kay a lot. And because of, um, you know, how you worked your business and moved up, um, I, I remember the million dollar directors used to go to Mary Kay's home and sit around her dining room table and have dinner with her. And you guys would stand on her um, stairwell and take pictures and you have some um, you knew her like you knew Mary Kay like you talked to her on the phone so will you share with us just some some of your Mary Kay stories and some things that you want us to know about her that you think is important mm -hmm. um, I probably have never and will never meet a more amazing woman maybe a more amazing human being than Mary Kay was for a multitude of reasons. But some of the things I would like you to know about her is that she was humble, that she clipped coupons. I mean, did Mary Kay really need to do that? No. That when we would shop on top trips and she was with us, 
she would always grab our hand and say, do you really need that? Or do you really want to spend that much money? I mean, things like that were just always amazing to me when you consider who Mary Kay was. But just a couple times, yes, I, I did have a lot of time with her, but a couple times that have always stood out in my mind was, and I've told the story a million times, but there's so many new people. Um, one of the top trips was to Paris and, and the million dollar directors were uh, invited to go to the top of the Eiffel Tower with Mary Kay for dinner. And they brought in a whole dance you know, show and then we had dinner and I don't know what it was about that year. And I only, only wish I could remember what year it was, but people were kind of thinking, um, what will happen when Mary Kay is no longer with us? And she must have caught wind of it or maybe somebody even asked her that night. I don't know, but um, it was right before dinner, top of the Eiffel Tower. If you know anything about Paris, it's the city of lights. It is truly one at night, one of the most magnificent cities I'll ever see. And so Mary Kay invited us all to get up. She happened to be sitting at our table, but we all got up and joined in a circle in the dance floor. They had a little dance floor. And um, she set up, well, first of all, the lights went off in the Eiffel Tower and that was orchestrated because she wanted us to see how gorgeous Paris really was at night. And so when the lights went off, obviously, you know that it just looked like the whole city and the whole world was lit up. And then she prayed and um, she got really teary at the end of her prayer um, because she went on to say that when she was no longer with us, that she really wanted us to know that we were her daughters and that she expected us to carry it on. And it was one of those moving moments um, that I'll never forget. I mean, of course there wasn't a dry eye in the room, but it really did just exemplify the kind of woman she was. She wasn't concerned about her. There, it, she was concerned about what she had built and would it be carried on in the right way. And I know it's those women and Dawn and those that we've passed it down to that our mission beyond the word to never let anything disrupt um, the integrity of our company. And, you know, we've been through challenging times and sometimes that can play in, but our foundation, meaning the people in Mary Kay are so strong that they're never going to let that happen. Your national sales directors are never going to let the integrity, the foundation of Mary Kay go anywhere, but get stronger. I, I promise you that. And of course, another time was when we did go to her home for dinner. Um, there was only 11 of us and it was a million dollar dinner. And we usually got flown into Dallas and, you know, we're wined and dined, but this time we went to her house. And so the make her makeup art, her, her personal makeup artist came to our hotel and did our makeup. And, and um, then a limo picked us up and took us to her home. And, you know, she, they had a red carpet. That's where, if you come to events that we've ever done, we've rolled out a red carpet. That's where that came from. Cause Mary Kay literally rolled out a red carpet down her entire driveway. And so we walked down the red carpet and into the house and she opened the door, had Gigi, her dog in her hands. And she said, my daughter is welcome to my home. And, you know, it's just one of those, another a moving moments. And so we went in and had dinner in her dining room and every one of us had our own waiter and they did voila and, you know, all that. And at the end of dinner, Dick Bartlett, who was then the president said, okay, this has been such a great night. And, oh, thank you, Mary Kay, for inviting all of us into your home. And, and so ladies, it's time to get back on the limo. And Mary Kay went, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, 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 no. We're going to go into the living room. Didn't you all bring your pajamas? She was all about girlfriend time. She was all, she really wanted us. She thought maybe we bought our pajamas so that we could all spend the night. We were all going, yeah, sure we have them. I mean, nobody wanted to leave. And so we went into her family or her living room and kicked off, she kicked off her shoes and she sat in her chair. And for the next two and a half hours till midnight, she told unbelievable stories of what she had gone through in her career before Mary Kay. And then what kind of went through her mind when she started it. And it really was just all about, she was not treated equally and she wanted to start a company where women could do anything they want and could soar to any height. 
based on what you do, that no one would ever hold you back. And isn't that true today in our marketing plan? The only person that's ever going to hold you back is you. <laughs> so get out of your own way <laughs> because you can have and do anything you want in this business. If you want to drive a Cadillac, you can. If you want to be a million dollar director, you can. And the only person that will ever stop you is you because the marketing plan won't. Nobody corporately will. And that's what Mary Kay wanted this company to be. And so she just was one of the most generous, down to earth people you'll ever, I, I will ever know. So I wanted you to know that about her. Um, what, if Mary Kay was on this Zoom with us, mm -hmm. what do you think she'd be saying to these women at this point in time in our world, our country, our company? What do you, what do you think her advice would be from what you know of her? Mm -hmm. She was a master at breathing belief in you, whether you had it or not. I mean, another thing that she was masterful at is, um, and I'm getting to, I'm going to answer that through this. Mm -hmm. Whenever she did guest events, I hosted one in Cleveland and there were 650 people at this guest night. And she, at the end, people always wanted to come up and shake her hand and get her autograph or whatever. And she stood in that line till every single person was met even though Mel, which was then her husband, was trying to pull her away. She finally kind of angrily looked at him and said, stop it. Stop it. These people are here and I want to give them. I want to give me to them. And so she was unbelievable. She could look into your eyes and, and the whole world would stop around you because she focused on you. And you know, today, I think she would tell you to listen more and talk less. I think she would tell you, I know she would tell you to care more about someone else than you care about yourself, that what you give out comes back a million fold because that's the kind of person she was and it, it was just who she be. She always wanted to make you feel important. That's why, you know, in her book, she always said, pretend there's a sign around every woman you meet that says, make me feel important because that's what she did. And if we had doubts or fears and ever shared that with her, she would take the time, she would hold your hand, she would hold your cheeks and say things that would allow you to become superwoman, that would allow you to go, huh, I can do it. She believes in me. And you know, that's, I believe what she would be saying to all of us today. Believe that we can do anything. Believe that people innately are good. Find the good in every single person. Don't be gossipy. Don't be backstabbing. Don't be critical, but find good in people and bring that up. Heighten that versus maybe their shortcomings. Love people where they are because that can gain, that can allow them to gain confidence to go a little bit further. And then when you love them there, they can go a little bit further. That's the kind of woman she was. Um, she could speak to an audience of 650 people and you would be in it and you would believe that she was talking directly to you. That was my first seminar experience. I sat up in the nosebleed section in the, uh, in the Dallas convention center and I was a mess and it was because I felt like she was talking to me, but that's because she always had a message of enhancing someone else's life. So I think what she would be most concerned about today is how I oriented we've become. You know, Bill and I just had this conversation the other day. He said, isn't it amazing when you're with people, you can spend a whole evening with someone or a couple and they never ask you one thing about you or your family. I, I, I think that's amazing because we're so trained to find out about other people and want to, that it's just amazing to me that today people don't ask about you or how, you know, tell me about your children or your grandchildren. And I don't think we have to go into massive detail. It's like looking at somebody's wedding album by the fourth page, I'm done. But at least you knew something about them, right? And that that is, is waning right now. I mean, it's just, it's slipping through the cracks and that would really hurt her. She would want that to be lifted back up. And guess what? We are an army of people, of women that can do exactly that. We can change the world. Mary Kay always believed that with this company could change the world. And I will never stop believing that. 
I mean, look at how many people have come to Christ because of Mary Kate, through Mary Kate, at a kitchen table or at an event or at a retreat or whatever. So you have so much in the palm of your hand in your Mary Kate opportunity to be able to enrich women's lives so much more than a product and even an opportunity. You can change people's lives, obviously, today, tomorrow, eternally, but you can make them better people. They, Mary Kay once said, I believe that we should send women home from, from beauty shows, because that's what we used to call them, better wives and mothers first, because we've loved on them, because we've cared about them, because we generally want them. We don't want to sell, just sell them or recruit them. We want to enhance their life. And she was just the master. She was our role model of that. Mm -hmm. So is your national, by the way. <laughs> What you talked about seminar and it, it takes me back to, I, I signed my agreement May 19th and then, you know, with the post dated check. So didn't have the hundred dollars. And then, you know, I think my, the company I worked for was giving a loan for vacations from the credit union. So I said, I'll go on a cruise and took the money and bought Mary Kay inventory. So it was in more credit card debt, which is why I was getting into Mary Kay. And then you're like, you got to go to seminar. And you had to sign up like seminars used to sell out and you had to sign up right away because every seat would be filled. And I'm like, I'm getting married and I don't know where, you know, Larry's going to be stationed at and he's at the academy. And so I'll just have to wait till next year when things are more settled down. And I think of, I mean, you would not take no for an answer. Like you were a dog with a bone with that. Like you would not take no for an answer. And I'm so grateful for that because I did experience that when Mary Kay came out on stage, it was like everything just shut down. And I'm like, what, why am I crying? Like, I'm not a crier, now I am, but back then I wasn't a crier. Like, why am I crying? But I mean, literally now looking back, you could feel the Holy Spirit there. I didn't realize that's what was going on, but you know, that is exactly what was going on. But I wouldn't have made it through my first year in Douglas, Arizona without having gone to seminar because I would have thought oh well Debbie Moore can do this in her you know area of Chicago but you know down in Douglas Arizona this is just not going to work so you know share you told me at new consultant training that you don't miss a Mary Kay event like it is non-negotiable and I believed you and I still believe you like I, in my 35 years I've missed two leadership conferences out of the four to six events a year that a director has. And that's because they were ripping kindergarten sized babies out of my body. Other than that, <laughs> I would have rather have been at leadership conference. So share with us, you know, what, how, what did Mary Kay and Daylene White, for those of you who don't know, I mean, there's Mary, your family tree is Mary Kay Ash, Daylene White, Debbie Moore, myself. Like that's your family tree. So this is how family information gets passed on. And if people don't pass it on, like stuff gets messed up. And then generations have to relearn things instead of standing on each other's shoulders. So what were the things that Mary Kay and Daylene taught you about events that you taught me that are such an important part of our culture that, you know, during this virtual time, we've had virtual events and They've done the best they can. You know, the company's done the best they can, but right. nothing compares to being with people. Right. So as we head back into real-time events with real live people, getting on airplanes, getting in cars, going to hotels, share with us, you know, what, what were you taught about that and what's the importance of that? You know, it's funny, Dawn. I thought and thought about this, not recently, but um, I have in the past. What was it that made me so such a maniac on certain things. And first of all, I said to my director, I was only a month and a half new when seminar was happening when I was brand new. And I said to her, oh, Marsha, I mean, we're so young and I'll go next year. Exactly what you said, I said to my director. And she just was very quiet and said, you know, I understand why you're saying that, but you have to hear me there may not be a next year. You need to go this year because that's where we are right now. And it easily can be a life-changing career moment for you. And I don't know why those words 
were so powerful to me. Well, I, I know why, because I respected her. She had four young children. She was driving a pink Cadillac. I thought, I'm going to listen to her. And so, and Mary Kay had said in an event that I attended, listen to your director. She has your best interest at heart. She's not going to tell you something that's not going to benefit you. So I did that. I must have been young, 23 and naive or whatever, whatever you want to call it. But, and then I went to my first seminar and it was after that, that I was convinced and committed that when I, because I became a director in that first year, I will never allow people to give me an excuse of why they can't go. I will never buy into this, not this year, but next year, because there may not be another year. There may not be that next year. And let's see, in 42 years, I went to 42 seminars, of course. And I have to tell you that everyone was, there was a reason for every single one of them in my journey. There was a reason. There was a nugget, many. There were things that propelled me to the next level. So, you know, Mary Kay used to always say, recess, wait, wait, what's the saying? There's never recess for the pro or something like that, meaning... Mm -hmm. You'll never know it all. Well, and, and to substantiate that saying, she used to sit always in the front row at every meeting and she always had a notebook and a pen. Now think about this, you guys. This is Mary Kay Ash, you know, the woman whose name is on the building, sitting, mm -hmm. taking notes from speakers, directors, nationals that are teaching at this particular event. And I'll never forget watching her do that thinking, well, if she thinks it's that important, I better never miss, I, I'm A, never gonna miss one, but I'm never gonna miss taking notes either. Mm -hmm. Along the same lines of never missing an event, it always galled me when I watched people at seminar get up and go out into the hallway for whatever reason. I mean, I understand if you have to tinkle, I get that, but they were going out to stretch their legs or to do whatever. And you know, it always haunted me because I thought the minute I do that is the minute I miss the nugget that I needed. So I am never gonna, I'm gonna sit here until the event is over. And I would encourage you to do the same. First of all, I would encourage you to never miss an event that Dawn offers or this company offers, whether you think you need it or not. Trust me, you do. And then I want you to be present totally present at that event. I mean, pen and paper or computer, whatever works best for you. Because A, you'll never remember it all. And B, there, there will be something there that could turn the tide in your business. Mm -hmm. And speaking about virtual events and Mary Kay and how you guys give this company grace because they have pulled everything out that they know to pull out, to make this year um, good, great. And I know that there have been times that maybe it didn't come off as they had hoped, but that's no reason to miss the next one. Because I will tell you one thing about the company and the people that work at the company. When they know that something wasn't totally right, A, they admit it. They don't try to cover it up. They don't try to make an excuse for it. And B, they are on it like hound dogs to make the next one greater than we can even imagine. And I believe that's what's gonna happen at seminar because let's be honest, career conference wasn't wonderful for, for you know reasons. You still, you still got something out of it though. I mean, you did see, still see people, heavens, that was worth it right there. But you can count it done that seminar will be amazing. And quite honestly, it could be the last seminar on Zoom. It could be a history making seminar because prayfully by next seminar, you're gonna all be back in Dallas. So I, I can't even imagine somebody not registering for the next event, which is seminar. It, it's just, my mind can't even go there for what you could potentially miss that could change the trajectory of your business, if not your life. So don't buy your own excuses. Stop lying to yourself and listen to the people that are in the places that you want to go and do what they say because it will get you to the next step. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about um, another thing that I think um, you taught me and were very strong with and known for in Mary Kay is image. 
Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing you walk with Nancy Murata by me, you know, in the mall, professionally dressed in a suit, um, looking like a million bucks in the middle of the day. And I'm thinking of the women I'm working with 80 hours a week in retail and myself and knowing that we don't look like that. Um, and <laughs> what were you taught um, by Mary Kay and Daylene and other pioneers? Because the image of Mary Kay is so important. It's one of the things I believe that sets us apart um, from every other direct selling company, for sure. I've never gone to another direct selling meeting going, wow, I'd want to recruit these people in Mary Kay. Or wow, I'd like to join this group of people in, you know, whether it's on a computer screen now or in person, because they're not representing excellence. They, I mean, it may look hobbyish what they're doing, but they, it wouldn't have recruited me out of a business degree to go into and start a business with because of how they presented themselves to the world. So share mm. with us some good old fashioned Mary Kay image training. Cause again, mm. like we need to spiff it up a little bit behind the computer screens, but also we're all going to be leaving our zoom rooms and being out with people that are going to be looking at us 360 degrees, not just our front side upper quarter. Oh, no truer words were spoken. And you know, when you, one of the things you said a, a couple sentences back was what did Mary Kay and Daylene teach or do? Okay, there were image classes even in the old days, but we didn't, we never needed one. And I'll tell you why. They walked it out. Their image was the class. You never saw Mary Kay ever if she wasn't totally coopted. I never saw Daylene. Now that doesn't mean they weren't casual, like on trips when we were going on tours, Mary Kay was always casual, but she always looked fabulous. As a matter of fact, she always turned heads. Daylene always turned heads. So they, their example was the best uh, image class we could have ever gotten. But yes, they, you know, of course I grew up learning about how important it is. And I can't really remember who it was that once I think it was from stage at seminar, a speaker, a guest speaker. I want to say it was like, not Paul Harvey, but it was somebody, maybe it was Zig, could have been Zig Ziglar, because we had him one year, um, said to Mary Kay, you are image makers. And I never forgot that. We're beauty consultants, but we're image makers. We are creating the image of what a Mary Kay beauty consultant is, does, every day of our life. And... I believe that image has always been important. That's why I'm just a Nazi on it. But I believe right now it is more important than maybe in any year that we've been in existence because we've had to do this. We've gotten casual. Um, we've, we've fallen into, for lack of a better word, a casual... I don't mean not professional, but kind of not professional look because we're at home, right? And so now that the world is reopening, it is critically important for all of us to up our game, not equal our game, not down our game, but up our game because people are watching now that they're out and about. They always have been watching, but they're really watching now. And you will bring attention to yourself by the way you look, the smiles that you give, the compliments that you give to the sales girl or the waitress or the whatever. And if she likes what she sees, she's going to be much more open to the possibility of wanting a facial coming with, with you to a meeting or a Zoom than if you look like everybody else. Quick story. When we lived in Hudson, uh, I... I used to always say, I wouldn't go to my um, mailbox if I didn't look good enough to have run into Mary Kay and said hello to her. And that was the truth in those days. So every day I dressed. And I, on the way home from an appointment one day, stopped at the grocery store in Hudson to do some grocery shopping. And um, the, at this particular grocery store, they always walked you out to the car. And so this darling high school kid, 
boy, walk me out. And before we got to my car, he stopped and he said, I just want to ask you, what do you do? And I, I said, and I want to ask you, why are you asking me that? And he said, because when I see you here, you always look great. And that's not true of a lot of people that shop here. And so I said, well, let's just keep walking to my car. And then of course he saw the pink Cadillac and his aunt was a Mary Kay beauty consultant. So he knew immediately that it was a Mary Kay car. And I said, that's what I do. We create images for people. And he said, well, you sure have created a good one. And I'll never forget that. I'll never, here was a, probably a 16 year old boy who recognized it. So think of the people that you see when you're going to the grocery store, when you're going to the dentist or the doctor or to the bank, because your image could be the door opener to a conversation that might not have opened. Zooms, oh, you guys, it's probably a good thing I retired because if I were doing Zooms this whole year, <laughs> you, by the end of the year, you might not like me because I would not have allowed you to appear on one of my Zooms in anything but what you're in right now. And heaven forbid you brought dinner to the Zoom or your children were running around in the background screaming because you know what? I wouldn't put up with that when I held my meetings. You, you know, when we held Mary Kay meetings live, people didn't bring dinner into the meeting or they didn't bring their children. They didn't come in in their sweats or a t-shirt that said some funky saying. And so I think it's really important you guys right now to brush it up, brush it up. And I can tell from tonight, either you've been coached or you're just really, really smart women because you all look great. Whether you're in your director suit or you're, you know, just a blouse that's really attractive because you guys, that's what you're gonna attract. You are the attraction factor. And so make your attraction really strong and really good. And of course have Mary Kay on for gosh sakes. If you don't have your product on when you're going out, why would anybody ever wanna sit down with you? Right? That doesn't make sense. So I'm gonna ask this and then I'm gonna stop the recording and we're gonna um, let people ask some questions. So you guys think of some things you want, um, would like Debbie to expound on or share. Um, but what would be your top three pieces of advice? Because these women on here, I you know consider them the, you know, they're the top, 10% of our national area. They're our future leaders, whether they choose to do that um, as a red jacket, a team manager, a sales director, or a national sales director. Um, what would be your top, um, top three pieces of advice for them moving forward? Okay, sure. Um, the first one would be, don't let another month go by that you don't have a clearly defined goal for yourself. Of course, you're going to have a yearly goal because July 1st is the new seminar year. So I really want you to pray about, think about, strategize what you want to accomplish in this new seminar year after you've finished an awesome seven-day run in June. Because let me say one thing about the seven-day run in June. What you do for the next seven days will catapult you into a great July. I have always said June is a pivotal month. It goes both ways. It ends a year, but it also starts a new year. So what you do right now matters. You don't wait till July 1st to rev up your engines because it's going to take you two weeks to do that. You rev up right now. So I think number one would be you have to have a goal because you know what? The times that I didn't have a clearly defined goal is a drift. You just kind of drift. Time just kind of comes and goes. But boy, when you have a goal, you wake up in the morning missioned. You know what you need to do. You're excited. It energizes you, you guys. It motivates you when you have a clearly defined goal. And by the way, share that with your director because no one wants your success more than she does. And she'll help you every step of the way or your national, of course. So you need to have a month, first your yearly goal and then your monthly goal. Break your monthly goal down into what you're gonna do each week. Because sometimes we say, well, this month I'm going to recruit three people and um, I'm gonna sell $2,000 and we end up at the 21st going, oh my gosh, look how much of the month has already gone by because we didn't break it down to know what we needed to do at the end of week 
one, at the end of week two, at the end of week three, and at the end of week four. So that you have mile marker times in that month. So the first is, that, is you have a clearly defined goal. The second, I believe, would be to make a decision right now that you, and, and I'm talking to the choir here, but you need to hear it anyway. You need to decide you're going to attend everything that's offered to you. Every, every company event, every event that Dawn promotes, workshops, retreats, whatever. And along those lines, any contest she throws out, you're going to win it. You're not going to work at it. You're not going to try. You're going to win it because you're capable of doing that. And you're not going to let yourself off the hook. And I guarantee you, if you do those things, you are going to have the best year of your Mary Kay career. It, it's, it's inevitable. So I want you to, number two, decide you're going to attend everything and work for every challenge that's given. And number three is the most important. You have to have 100% commitment. 100%, not 98, not 99.5. You have to be so committed and on it that nothing will stand in your way. It always reminds me whenever I share that, I always think back to that first million dollar year and how crazy impossible that was. But we never dealt in impossible. We dealt in possibility. We dealt in commitment. You know, we had never done that production in a month. My unit never hit 200 in unit members. But you know what? When you are passionate and committed to something, you'll figure it out. Once you are committed, you will walk it out. You'll figure it out and you'll walk it out. And if you don't know how to do that, that's when you reach up and you ask for a strategy plan with your national so she can give it to you. And then you have to be willing to commit to it and go to work. Don't let yourself off the hook anymore. If you have been, you know, when, when someone asked me, why, um, why were you successful? I, I didn't let myself off the hook because I knew that I wouldn't like that. I wouldn't like the feeling that it gave me. I, I wouldn't like the result that it didn't give me. And so I was always missioned and passionate about reaching that goal. Did I always reach it? No. In the time frame that I wanted? No, but I didn't give up. You know, I didn't become a national in the, the year that I thought I would, but I didn't give up. And ultimately we did. And are we thankful? Yeah. We like this retirement, by the way. Did you notice what my cup said? It says Nana. <laughs> this is my new life. I'm no longer a Mary Kay National Sales Director. I'm now a full-time Nana. <laughs> that makes $22,000 a month. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys, there's so many, um, so many nuggets there. Any, um, before I stop the mm -hmm. recording, any, um, additional well you know what i'm gonna stop the recording and then we're gonna this is gonna be well, don't stop it yet because okay. i i want to say to your area i okay. know who you are i know who you are i know what you've already done but you know what you got seven days left you guys it, it can be escalated like nobody's business in seven days if each of you claim something and go after it and if you're a director you get your unit to claim something and go after it even if you've already met your goal for the year even if your unit has already done what you thought you were going to do, or you personally have reached the National Court of Sales, the National Court of Recruiting, the unit club of your dream, I don't care. Do more. Do more. Because that's going to catapult your area. And you know what? How many times have I said this to you? Your area deserves to be a, an inner circle. And it's one step at a time. So you need to get into that mm -hmm. diamond circle and then into that inner circle. But but you guys, this company needs your area as an example of what an inner circle area looks like, what you do, how you do it. It's so important to keep the culture strong. So you decide right now, even if you've met your goals, that you're not stopping, that you're going to do more because it helps the team. It helps mm -hmm. the area. Mm -hmm. Amen. They all amen. said amen. All right, I'm going to stop.